I want to thank you for joining me once again out here in the shop. Another awesome episode of Let's Make a Knife for you. It is now time to return to the folding knives. I have with me both of these knives. They are very, very rough at this point. It is time to do the stop pins, the lock bar, and the detent. And that is the uh, essentially the holy trifecta of having a really good action on a knife. You can get those three really, really good, and the knife is flat and square and true, and everything's just how it should be. Then the action is phenomenal, like this one. This is my personal everyday carry knife. It's my shop knife. I take it camping. It goes everywhere. And it's nothing special. It's just a little CPM M4. But it is a beast of a knife, and it has a really nice action. That is the same kind of action I will be doing on these two knives. So, opens very easily. Just enough detent to keep the blade from ever falling out, and just enough to where if you press that flipper tab, you get blade deployment. But not so much that it won't fall closed. The lock bar also has to be just perfect so that you don't get any kind of lock rock. So this blade, when it is in the locked position, is just as rigid as a fixed blade. The moment you press the lock bar, it just falls shut. So that is the kind of action that I'm going to make in these two knives. I actually want to try to make these a little bit smoother. This one, because it has the stonewashed finish, the detent ball is still nice and smooth, but I think I can make these even better. them reassembled and we are perfectly centered still a ton of work to go on the pivots so that everything opens very smoothly we are nice and centered so now I'm going to cut out the lock bars and then I will mill the relief for the spring and drill the detents and then I will choose where to put the stop pin in between the detent and the pivot because I don't want that stop pin to touch the washers that are in between the liner and the blade. And there's the tiniest bit of clearance there. And that's actually created by these tiny, and that's made by these tiny little bronze washers. They are 10 thousandths of an inch thick, which is actually very, very thin and it's just enough to give the blade good clearance. And I have done some with bearings, like this one is on caged bearings, and it works very, very well. I, however, wanted to try some uh, knives with some washers, so these two will ride on bronze washers. I have to uh, make a small tool that will allow me to cut out these lock bars. The original tool that I had to do that with broke. I use these little Dremel cutoff wheels and they're actually really good cutting titanium at about a medium speed. You can cut an entire lock bar with just one disc. And originally I was using a Dremel tool, the one that comes with your Dremel, in my mill just to hold these. Uh, but it had a couple issues. So 
I'm actually going to use uh, a spare pivot part. So I'm going to go ahead and get some stuff together and we're going to make ourselves a little tool holder for some Dremel cutoff wheels. The first thing I have to do is take that the cap off the top. So now all I have to do is drill this hole a little bit larger. I'm going to drill it to 5 30 seconds inch. It should uh, fit over that threaded part of the screw just fine. There we go, that should be strong enough to work without any kind of issues. So now I so now I am going to take these blades. I'm going to wrap them in a stainless heat treat foil, and I'm going to do just a little bit more annealing. And I'm just super excited at how these are turning out. You can really see it on the spine there. I'm going to soften these up, and then I will do the stop pins and the detent. But so far this is looking really amazing and while these are getting soft I am going to work on the handles and get some of the extra pieces attached to the handles. So these should look really really wonderful in the next day or two. These two knives are going to be absolutely fantastic. I will make sure of it. So I'm going to disassemble these and uh, get them all wrapped up.
So now I'm going to fit the back spacer for this knife. So the back spacer is going to be the marbled carbon fiber. And I'm going to use these little knife connector guys to actually screw into because you can't really thread the marbled carbon fiber very well. Now that I have the backspacer done, I am going to counterbore these screw holes so that the tops of the screws will recess into the liners so that the decorative pieces will sit totally flat and flush. So I have the decorative handle pieces fit up pretty roughly. And I did a rough assemble on the knife. The blade is nice and centered. And everything is looking really nice. Back spacer fit up. Still a lot of cleanup to do on that and I'm going to do some jimping around the back spacer so it's going to be really cool. And that blade just looks fantastic. It's now nice and soft so that I can drill the detent. And I'm not going to set it yet. I'm not going to drill into the blade, but I'm going to drill a hole in the liner so that I can scribe exactly where that detent ball will be so that I can plan where I want to put the stop pin so that the stop pin track has ample room so it doesn't interfere with the detent ball. So I'm going to set this knife aside for a little bit and I'm going to do all of the same steps on this knife. So I have all of the pieces fit up. The titanium Damascus bolsters are exactly where they should be. The marble carbon fiber is all fit. I have a little bit of a final fit up that I'll do by hand. But that is looking really, really wonderful. So I'm going to hit the bolster area with a torch to uh, take all this apart, undo that super glue. Now that is where I'm going to call this one. Both knives are ready for their detents and stop pins, so that's where I'm going to call it for today. I am very excited with how these are looking. Still lots of finish work to do, but it's this work, it's the initial foundation work that really makes all the pieces fit together perfectly. It makes the blades centered in the knife. I want to thank you for continuing to watch these. It's been such an amazing journey to make these incredible folding knives. I mean, just look at that stainless Damascus. You can really see that 3V core on this side. And the core is actually very centered. The grind is just off a little bit for now. And I'm not concerned about that because I have not even heat treated this. There's still a lot of grinding to go on the bevels. So I'm just kind of leaving it as is for now. But that pattern is just beautiful. 
and it is right now it's only at a dirty 120 grit so I cannot wait to take this up into the six or eight hundreds after it's heat treated for maximum contrast this is gonna be a really exciting plate and so is the other one so with that I am going to go ahead and wrap this video up it has been such an amazing build so far we are almost done with all of the hard parts once the detent ball and stop pin are set and the lock faces are all done and and it really is just a functional knife and it is all all downhill from there it's all easy and uh, even though the finishing work does take a long time it is really just to make the piece more and more beautiful so I'm really excited to get working on the finish work and get these uh, two folding knives finished up I want to thank you for continuing to watch my videos I have many more for you guys please like and subscribe it would mean a lot to me to uh, see everybody subscribing here on a so I want to thank you once again for joining me on Let's Make a Knife. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you on part five next episode, getting the stop pin done and getting these relatively beautiful.